Good evening and welcome to Julie Hickey Designs Facebook page. <laughs> I'm oh got somebody watching. Yay! Right, let's Oh, Julie Hickey Designs is live. No, won't let me do it. Okay, I'm just refreshing my computer so that I can see any uh, comments that not that I, I can read them yeah. while I'm actually Obviously. doing it, but I always like to have it there. So, okay, right, I've got it up there. Let's move that out of the way. Oh, I've just pulled my light off. Oh, no. Oh, this isn't going to be any good, is it? That's a great start. I only refixed it the other day. Bear with me a moment. I'm sorry. Not a good start. And my computer is frozen, so I don't know if I have totally. Right, let's put the light back in. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that you can hear me, okay? If you could send me some hearts, that would be wonderful. And uh, now I've refixed the light. <laughs> so sorry about the view of my jumper, but never mind. Yeah, we've got some hearts. Excellent. OK, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, going to be having a look at some cards that I created using um, a technique that I learnt again from Jennifer Maguire. She does have some excellent videos, highly recommend taking a look. Um, so you can make four cards from four inky backgrounds. So it's a really good way to boost up uh, your collection of cards if you've got lots of birthdays coming up. It's great for something like that. So I'm going to flip the camera and uh, we will get on. I just wanted to add actually that I need to add to um, the list of stockists now. I need to add Sharon um, from Forget Me Not Craft Cabin and also um, Lisa from Luby Craft. So I will add those after the um, live tonight and I'll put them on the post that's pinned to the top of the page. So it's got all the stockists of everyone who stocks the Sweet Meadow collection. Lovely to see so many familiar names popping up. Uh, yeah, it's really lovely. So thank you all for joining me and uh, I will flip the camera and let's get started. Okay, I can bring my light back in now. That's better. Okay, I will move when I start working. I will make sure that we've got the light covered up there so it's not reflecting in the glass. So these are the cards that I'm going to be making tonight. I'm not going to do the same colour palette. Um, I know lots of you will know that once I've made one card, I don't really like making it again in the same colours. So I wanted to do it in different colourways. And I've also done it slightly differently as well. It's funny how things... I was talking to Hazel about this this morning. It's funny how things evolve. And when you actually make something for the second time, you change how you make it. So, uh, yeah, you're getting, you're getting to see a different way now. Um, but we get to the same end results. So I've got two that I've layered onto black card, which I think really makes everything pop. And then I've also layered two onto white card. And I think, I mean, I love both of them. I do like both of them, actually. I quite like the white ones now I've looked at it a bit more. Um, but yeah, so you can decide. I've actually layered them all onto black for tonight. Um, but you can decide whether you want to put them onto white card or whether you want to put them on black or whatever colour card. So, the colours that I've chosen that I'm going to use tonight are, we'll start with the dark ones, I'm going to use Prize Ribbon, I'm going to use Mermaid Lagoon, I'm going to use Broken China, and I'm going to use Crushed Olive. And I really like Crushed Olive, and I forget about it so often, because it's a really lovely, like, limey green. So it really um, packs a punch, really really quite zesty looking and so we're obviously going to be using the sweet meadow stamps and i'm going to use just the um, bouquet of blooms and 
my sweet sentiments tonight. So I'm going to use these two and the sentiments as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do, oh, I was going to show you, tell you, explain as well. <laughs> I put my dies down on my um, press and it was the magnets pulling them away. I wanted to explain uh, what cards I've used. So to make my four cards, I've taken a piece of, I knew I wouldn't remember what the size is. It is, is it 15 by... 21 yes so 15 by 21 and please can you tell me what the white biz bit that this bit here okay yes of course i can i missed who asked me that oh that was lynn yes of course i can lynn let me just run through the cards and then i'll, I'll tell you about that so this is um what i've made my card blanks from so i've scored down the middle fold them half and made my card blank so i've got four of those then i've got four pieces of a6 black cardstock and I have trimmed these down to go onto the fronts of my cards so I've already layered those up because you don't want to watch me layer those up to stick those on and then I've also got four bits of A6 white card which I have trimmed down so I've trimmed the black down I took um, five mil off so that I get a nice little border all the way around the edge and then I've taken Trim them down again, and I've ended up with my pieces of card, which I have cut ready. And these are... Um, mm -mm, nine and a half by thirteen and a half. So nine and a half by thirteen and a half. And then these are the perfect size then to be cut in half and then into quarters at the end. But we don't do that yet. So we're going to ink up our backgrounds to start with, first of all. So I will talk Lynn through, or everybody through. Right, this mat here, this comes, I've only taped it down because mine was starting to um, lose its stick. It's, um, it is, I can't think what it's called. It's got silicon on the back, so it will stick. But because um, it, where I've used it so much, it ends up, it wasn't sticking properly. So I've stuck mine down with some tape, but you don't need to do that when you first start. It's like a... A craft mat so when you're doing inky backgrounds if you do it on the glass and i'll just show you very quickly and i can clear it up when i put ink down on here and ink down on the mat it reacts very differently so when i spritz this with water and it was lovely to do this because a lady actually commented and said now i know why my inky backgrounds i've been doing them wrong so if you spritz this with water it just puddles if you spritz it with water on the craft mat, can you see, in fact, I'll bring the camera down as low as I can. It actually beads. So you get these little beads, whereas this one has just gone like a puddle. So when you try and pick this up, you're going to get just pure colour. Whereas when you try and pick this up, you get little splodges of colour. So it's much easier to do a background from this than it is on here. You're just, it's not wrong, but you'll just get a very different effect. So that that's what that is, Lynn. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna wipe that up first of all, get rid of that, because I'm not doing that type of inking tonight. We're gonna do blending tonight, which is why I've got my brushes out. Okay, and I want a piece of card on there so it stops the light. Right, so. With my first piece of card, I'm going to do my palest colour first. And I will just make sure, yeah, because I did my darkest colour last. <laughs> so I'm going to take as much of the prize ribbon out of the brush before I go into the paler colour. So now I can pick my colour up and I start in the centre and I go around in a circular motion. You don't want to go all over. You want to have those white spaces. OK, so just keep going round and round in a circular motion. Blend in those inks. You can make it as wispy as you want at the edges. You can go as far out as you want, but I but do leave some white because I think that gives you 
it's all part of the effect if you like of cutting it into four if it was completely covered I mean you just get a different look I suppose but I do like that little bit of white around the edge so we're going to do that so we've got our broken china which is our first one then I'm going to wipe my brush get as much broken china out put that to one side and that can start to dry we can heat it as well to dry it but I have actually already prepared some so these have been drying all morning and I'm going to use those tonight for stamping but I will I will color my pieces of card because I think it's good and it's good to see and also you don't need to worry too much about what it looks like how well it blends because you are going to over stamp so you're going to cover a lot of it up um but obviously you want it to be you still need it to be blended nicely um but if you do get some bits where it's a bit harsh don't worry because you are going to stamp over the top of it so it will cover lots of bits up okay so i want a, <coughs> a similar effect with those two so i've got sort of the same amount of white showing left left showing okay so then we've got mermaid lagoon so we get as much of that off as possible and then we can go <coughs> to prize ribbon and i have to remember that this is the newest one so i have to go lighter with this one and my pressure to start with and then build the color up so i can once i know how much ink is on my brush and how much ink is being put down on the card then I can alter the pressure that I'm pushing down with my brush to blend that into the card but when I first get started I start very soft <coughs> and then just increase the pressure so that I get a nicer smoother blend then and then just blend those out to the edges so you've got a similar amount of white showing And that's our prize ribbon so we've got our three blues done and then i just wanted that really nice zesty color so that one can go to one side to dry and so we've got crushed olive which like i say is a lovely color and i don't use it often enough i think we get quite sort of stuck in the colors that you like and you tend to always just go for them so it's really quite nice to use something that maybe you don't use all the time so again, just blending the edges so you've got a similar amount of white left showing. And I just thought that these colours together were a really nice blend of different colours. And I want it to look really different to the ones that I've already done as well. So if I bring them all back in, so you can see we're going from dark to lighter with the blues. And then we've got that really lovely, zesty uh glime well zesty crushed olive in there so i'm going to put them to one side because if you were going to stamp on them now really you would need to let them dry so you can heat them to dry them that would work um or you can just leave them overnight you could do lots all at once and then go back to them or you can do what i did and leave them for best part of the day and th these should be fine now to stamp on so in my press i'm gonna put my corner i'm trying to watch it on my computer but it's my computer is not happy it's jumping around all over the place i hope it's all right for everybody else it looks like it is okay so i'm gonna take to my lovely friend because then i'm gonna put a sentiment inside as well so if it's just if you just put something like a generic sentiment on the front you know that you can use it for lots of different occasions and different um yeah different occasions okay so i'm going to line it up with my five inch line down one side because i need to know where i'm putting it so when i put the next piece of card in i can line it up and i'm going to line it up with the six inch line here so then i'm taking one of my corner stamps and i want it to to stamp like <coughs> across the bottom and then I'm going to get as much of this as I can. And then I need to get my sentiment in as well. And I need to line my sentiment up in that bottom corner. Because when I chop it, I want the, the sentiment to be 
like in this bottom corner here and it, the sentiment will be in the same place on all the cards so I'm quite happy with how that's all sitting so I will pick up my stamps and then you, I'm going to use Versafine because it's a really lovely black and ink your stamps up Tap in nice and gently, but making sure that you cover everything. And remember that these stamps, the centres, are really quite detailed. So I can bring my press over, apply some pressure, but I'm not trying to push down to Australia. I'm just applying an even pressure all over. Then I can lift this gently and just check that everything has stamped beautifully. Honestly, I do. Every time I do this, it's like, wow, that just looks amazing. That's mine. <laughs> I drew that. OK, so put the next one in. And again, we'll line it up at five inches and six inches. And you should be able to sort of see where to put it because of the um, excess inks that's here. That'll give you some sort of guide a little bit as well. So be careful not to touch it because the ink, the black ink takes a little while to dry. And we can re-ink our stamps. And this is a really lovely way to batch make cards like this. Make sure you've got the magnet in the right place. And again, nice and firmly because of all that detail that's in those stamps, gently on your sentiment you don't want to splay that out too much and then check and before you take your card away just make sure you've got all the details that you want if you haven't you can re-ink it and stamp it again so that's our second one bring our next one in so again on the five inch line and the six inch line and it is important to line these up because when we chop them up we want them to line up when we put them sort of back together again as the four and then we're going to open it out a little bit so if you are a little bit out it won't show too much but you do want to get as as good as you can okay so this is onto mermaid lagoon that's lovely and then our last one onto broken china So again, the five inch line and the six inch. Again, being careful not to touch them. Just so that the black ink has a little bit of time to dry. And then bring this back in. And I can't even check any of the comments because my computer has gone completely off now. <laughs> Never mind. OK, so that's all looking lovely as well. So we can take this out and we've got our four backgrounds. So I'm not going to worry about cleaning this. I will clean it, though, because I do clean my stamps. Unlike somebody else I know. OK, so if this is looking and this is quite wet still on here. So let's start with the first one that we did. And I'm going to heat heat set the ink because I don't want it to, to smudge at all when I cut it. And also it will leave marks in your guillotine as well if the ink is still wet. I give it a quick blast with my heat tool. And... I know lots of you will will know from last time that if you hold it up, the the air, the heat from the heat tool is able to get through the card rather than doing it flat on your glass mat because you end up with a pool of condensation underneath. So it takes longer to dry something if you do it flat on the work surface. If you hold it up, the air can get through and it will dry it quicker. And then I'm going to do the little test that I do with a bit of kitchen roll just to make sure that everything is dry before I put it through my guillotine. And sometimes you might need to heat the back as well just to help to make it straight again. 
That's probably from the ink that's on my card. The inky background as opposed to the black ink. And I can still see how shiny it is. So I do think it's still quite wet. And that, that's, the, that's another thing which actually you can heat emboss with the Versafine and put clear on the top because the ink does take a little while to dry. So if we just put a piece of kitchen roll down and just hold the card and just go in one direction so that you're not smudging the ink in case it is very wet still. But you'll get little bits. I've got little bits there that I have picked up. So be careful you don't put that down when you do your next one. So just move to a clean piece of kitchen roll. Again, we've got a few. It's over by the words, actually. That's interesting. So then just pushing down. making sure as much of it is dry as possible there's nothing worse than doing all the lovely inking and stamping and then your fingers or you put the piece in the guillotine to cut it and it smudges because it's not dry okay so i'm going to take my guillotine and what i've done i don't know if you can see this i'll stand up so i can see i've marked my guillotine i measured half of this and marked it on my card and then I decided, because I was cutting four, just with my pencil, I've marked where to put my card in my guillotine. So then I know that that is half, half the piece of card. So I can cut it in half there. And then I've put another mark. So I measured here, marked the card for the first one. And then I pencil marked on my guillotine. And I can rub these off. When I'm done, don't want to do any more of these, I can rub those marks off. But then I know that I'm cutting everything down to the same size. Okay, so one. So we're going to cut all four up. Making sure we've lined that up. And then to that one. And then once we've cut them all, we're going to use one quarter from each of the cards, colours. Oh, yeah, one, a quarter of each of the colours to create our cards. So we'll have a, all the different colours will be on all the different cards. No, last one and by doing things like marking your guillotine it does mean that when you're doing batch things like this it does make everything so much quicker rather than having to measure and mark everything you've just done that one mark so it's good to go for all of them and if i'm honest i probably won't even bother rubbing them off i'll just keep them on there okay so put all my colors down move my guillotine and then we've got our four cards all ready with our layers. I'm going to do them all black because I've done them ready and I do like it onto black, I have to say. So now I start off with my, put my sentiment in the corner of each of my cards. Then I know that this one goes at the top. So that one's got to go on that one. And we could have lime green on this one. And we could have dark blue on that one and we'll have broken china on that one so then we need that color on that one so we're getting one of each color on each of our uh that's the same one hmm, is that the same one i've got one on there that's a different color and then we need the dark i need a dark blue on there and a broken china that's that one done i need that's the top one and that's the bottom one so we've got all that don't they look lovely and don't they look different from the first set as well oh. so i'm going to put mine on with foam pads 
So because this is cardstock, you could just do one foam pad on each um, piece, to be honest. I'm being a bit excessive putting two on each um, panel. You only really need to put one. Um, but if you're using anything that's not as robust as card, then I would, maybe you could even layer it onto card. So then I'm going to take my backing paper away and I'm going to do one card at a time. Oops. And I usually start with my sentiment. And you can lay these out. You could do it before you take the backing paper off just so that you've got an idea of where these are going to go and how much of a border you've got to get to leave around the edge. So I would say it's about like that. And then we can bring this in. And as long as you're lining up your bottom and your top, you should be fine. This one I know goes that way. I need to stand up now. And then that one goes on there. Okay, first one done. And I do, do like giving them that bit of um, dimension. I do think that, that just that added bit of dimension adds that added bit of extra, um, interest to your card as well. And you can add, oh, that's just torn in half. I've never had that happen. Um, you can, um, I added glitter glue to mine. You can add glosses. You could obviously change your sentiment and not have the same sentiment on all of them. You could do a bit of inking on the inside of your card. Um, you could put, or you could stamp the one of the flowers, one of the corners on the inside of your card. Once you get to know the border that you've got as well, you know where to start placing your, your first one when you do your next one. So you get to know the, the border quite quickly and also which flowers line up with which flowers as well. Um, yeah, so you can add glosses, you could change the sentiments, you could stamp a flower inside. So you've got, you're continuing your theme from the front to the inside of your card. All sorts of different things you can do. We could use, I mean, I've used two blues here that are quite similar, but I mean, you can see the difference. Oh, I'm loving it. Absolutely love it. I do love when you can make lots of cards like really quickly as well like this so i'm going to end up with four birthday well I, they could be anything cards actually they could be thank you they could be birthday they could just be an encouragement card a thinking of you card you could put um hope your day is as special as you are on the inside doesn't have to be any day does it it doesn't have to be a particular day. It can be any day at all. Okay, sorry, I've got a bit of foam pad on my thumb. Right, so let's bring this up a little bit. And again, lining up the bottom and the side first. Then that's my... You get to know which pieces go together as well. I know that there's one of the little flowers across the bottom here that joins up. And I have to say, I've been working on cards today uh, for a workshop and it is along the theme of this card, but I've taken it to, an, well, I've done more to it. So I've given it a different look and taken, I don't know, added, made, I don't know, how do I explain it? Taken it to another level. Um, so I shall be posting that details of that workshop very soon as well. Um, just got one more card I think I need to do but then I will be posting an online workshop using this I'm going to use this stamp set because it's I love this one um, and we'll be using the sweet sentiments as well so that'll be an online workshop coming very soon 
and two more. Okay, so last one. I mean, how quick is this? What are we on? Half past eight. I mean, okay, I know I, I've already um, stuck the black backgrounds to my card, but that's not very time consuming, really. So to have made four cards in, oh, I, I cut my thumb yesterday on a staple on a box and I, I've just bled on the card. I was trying really hard not to. Hang on, let me get, I've had it taped up all day. Took the tape off because it was unsightly, but I don't want to, don't want to bleed on the cards. And let me just put a bit of tape over it. At least it will stop it spoiling the cards. Okay. We're all fine. I'll get a plaster afterwards. <laughs> okay, so that one goes up that way. So the most important thing when you're doing this is that you line all your stamping up and then the next important thing is that you cut your pieces of card to the same size. Got a real raggedy black edge there. There we go. So let's get rid of all those um, backing papers. So now I've got all these lovely cards. Pop them all there and they just... I'll just do one of them with some glitter glue because you don't want to watch me do all the glitter glue on all of them. But I tend to um, pick out the centre of the flowers. I do a little bit on each of the leaves, a squiggle on that lovely flower, a little bit down the leaf, and then I just scribble over those stamen details on the inside of the petal. Oh, and it looks so nice in the blue. And then I just put some glitter glue in the middle I really like prize ribbon actually. That's a really lovely blue and the glitter glue just looks gorgeous on it. So like I say, just a scribble over those stamens all in the middle. So it just draws your eye then to, to the flowers. Do you know what, how long is it gonna take me to do glitter glue? Minutes. I'm sure you won't mind. And then I've got my cards ready. And what I thought I would do is because I'm ending up with lots and lots of cards and not enough people with birthdays to send them to. So what I'm gonna do is um, after the live, I will pick somebody um, who's left a comment and I will message them I'll probably do it tomorrow. I do, I'll pick somebody tomorrow morning so it gives people a chance who aren't actually watching live. And I'll pick a winner and I will send you a set of four cards so that you can finish, put a sentiment. I won't put a sentiment anymore on here so that you've got four cards that you could send to somebody, you could give to charity, you can, whatever you want. You could give us a gift. Wouldn't this be nice if you did a set of these, maybe made a box to put them in? And you could do them as a, a set of gift cards to give or to sell if you sell your cards like that as well. I always think it's really nice. Um, I used to have, make cards and do a little wallet for my, my auntie, my, my dad's sister, because I didn't know what she wanted. Like she was 90 odd and she's always going to send cards to people for birthdays. So I just used to do her a selection of cards and uh, yeah, with the envelopes and everything in a nice box. So it makes a lovely gift for somebody. And it's a nice way to share your, your handmade cards as well. Okay, so you've seen all the cards. So someone's gonna win these. Leave me a comment and uh, I will message, pick a winner tomorrow morning and send them out. I'll add a few glosses as well. So let's have a look. So if I put the, I can put the tonight's ones up there. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I foiled them already. I foiled some little butterflies or different sizes of butterflies. 
of my foilables if I can pick them up so I foiled these with Wow's beautiful um, glitter gold glitter foil so we'll add these as well so I've already done them you can just curl the petals around um, a pokey tool and then with some glue do you know, I've just realised I've only glued the backing on. That's the first time I've picked my glue bottle up as well. It's all foam pads. So we can have one of those on there. I did some, I don't know if I've got lots of big butterflies left, but we could have a butterfly at least on each one. So you can alter where you put them. I'm actually going to, I do like it there actually. Oh, we could have one there. Let's have one there. Um, got another big one, or biggish one. Or well, we could have two little ones, so let's do two little ones on one. So we'll have one there. Have to be careful because I've done the glitter glue. So maybe add your butterflies if you're going to add them before you do the glitter glue. And we'll have one over there. And then on the last card, I've got three little ones left, so I'm going to use them all. They will have one there. Whoops. Whoops. And then, so I've just curled the, the wings up either side of the little bit of body in the middle. And then that gives you a little bit of something flat to uh, glue down as well. So just curl, curl them around your pokey tool. A little bit of glue. Don't know where to go. Yeah, we'll go up there. There we go. So someone will win those set of four cards. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me flip the camera back round. Um, that one. Move my light because that's horrible. Get you a bit further away. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave me a comment and then you'll be in with the chance of winning the four cards. And uh, I will update the list of people who stock the Sweet Meadow collection because it's gone to Sharon at Forget Me Not Crafts and also to um, Lisa at Luby Crafts as well. So I think I've got everybody else on there, but I will go and check and update the list. So it's um, pinned to the top of my Julie Hickey Designs page. So, yeah. So thank you for joining me. Um, I will see you again soon. And I will post that um, work, online workshop up very soon, in the, either hopefully tomorrow, if not on Friday. Um, but I'd love you to join me. We're actually going to make um, four, eight nine ten twelve cards how good would that be <laughs> okay i will see you all again soon and thank you for joining me have a lovely evening bye bye